Hello and welcome to Elliot's podcast. This week I am in the the bedroom setup and we are playing a my new fretless guitar. And so I'll be I'll be demoing that in a second. And yeah, then I'll talk a bit, but it's so th- so this is um this guitar took this was about five months, I'd say half a year, uh, in the making from when I pr- first put the deposit down to it and then the last deposit and then the shipping. And it, it shipped from California from a company named G&G Guitars. And the the company name is Altamira. And I think they're based on the other side of the U.S. And then this guitar, it was... I actually made in China. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but uh, it makes sense. But if you if you saw it, you would think, oh, it's it was made in America or something, because I have another classical guitar that is um, called Almansa, and I'm all, I'm pretty sure, unless they're playing a trick on me, that that one's made in Almansa, Spain. So, anyways, uh, I don't know why I'm already going off on on country of origin stories but this um yeah so i'll play this uh, guitar and then i'll tell you why i think it's um i'll tell you why i think it's interesting to me and why i would would share it and and where i'm at with the idea of because there's also the option of, of not keeping it so let's play maybe you can help me assess should i keep it or not (laughs) And uh, yeah, this is Elliot's podcast, so hang on a second.
Donkey Shun. <laughs> Donkey Shun. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still learning how to play this and as you can hear. And I think the 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 lesson that I have because everything's all about lessons. Because if someone's watching or listening to this and they're not really into guitars, I would say this has been an interesting experience for me because um, it's it's a instrument where you you're forced out of your out of your comfort zone and out of the conditioning of how you might have learned the instrument because there the when you learn guitar you and if you've been playing for a long time you're used to playing with frets which are metal bars that go up and down the instrument and they they hold the pitch but when you remove those and in bass players for some reason it's more common in bass that you can find a fretless bass and the famous Jaco Pistorius from Weather Report was a well-known fretless bass player and and I love the sound of fretless bass it has a great uh, interesting pinchy tone I mean keep I guess the reason why fretless bass is more common is because there is the upright bass and once you once you do the equivalent to the guitar it becomes in the in the realm of uh, cello and violin because those also have no frets so it's kind of funny for some people who who they who maybe played band instruments like in violin and stuff when they were younger because that that's common instead of piano some people are playing violin they would actually know more about this whole thing than i do because of the there's an art to finding the note and i guess with violin you have the bow that that gets your sound going and i guess you can bend into it or something but with the guitar it's it's a lot different and I've realized that that the one of the, disad, the one of the problems is that there's six strings, uh, and that's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. In the bass, it's four strings, cellos four obviously, and violin. So I think that's also what makes this extra hard is there's six strings, and so what the way this guitar came into my field of view was actually through Instagram because there's a, a player named Buzz Gravel, I think is how you say his last name. And he, he posts a lot of videos on on reels, and I think it showed up in my reels because I'm interested in uh, classical guitarists and different styles like that, um, kind of uh, Spanish and Brazilian, Portuguese players. I, so they would show up in my reels. And he showed up in there, and he, I never really seen, uh, I knew a, Cana- a Canadian company called Godin makes a fretless acoustic guitar, but it's not widely available, and it's really not available, which is kind of funny because we, I live in the same country that they're made in, but I, I think they're just not popular, and so the store doesn't, re- most of the stores don't really just put them out or stock them. And so then I found this guy, Buzz, and I saw a little bit about his his strategy for how to play fretless guitar. And part of it is that you can't you can't hold down chords. They won't work. And that's what's different about it. And that's why it won't appeal to a lot of like cut out a lot of people that I know who take up guitar casually, they are going to want to play chords because they're going to want to play songs that they hear on the radio. And so when you eliminate that capability, you've cut out 90% of the market, maybe 80, I don't know what percent of the market. Um, and then, and then, so, so the, and then on, on top of it for any other style of music, not being able to play chords easily, it now dwindles it away even further. And that's what Buzz's strategy is. I think he talks a lot about the open tuning and that's what I, I play in. Open tuning, you, you can tell it's open tuning because when you strum all the strings without any fingers on, it, it makes a nice sound. And 
Whereas if I if you hit the open tune, um, all the strings on a normal tuned guitar, it doesn't sound that interesting. Uh, so open tunings work a lot better for a fretless instrument. And uh, I think you you also have to play kind of slowly. And I've what I did on that demo that I that I worked on is I'm kind of working on my blues sounds, and so. This guitar would typically, when I play Middle Eastern and stuff, it will sound like an oud, because I think oud is fretless, the um, Arabic instrument. And then the, um, but when I play it and I play bl- funky blues, you're hearing the slide sound, but I don't, I don't even need a slide because everything slides. So that's really where I'm, I'm at with it. And I, I to be honest with you, I'm a little. I'm a little on the fence about it because it's it it's I, I didn't get to play it before I bought it. So I had put a deposit down five months ago and then you paid the re- I paid the remainder and then there was a customs fee because it came in from the states. So I never tr- I, I paid for it and I never tried it. So I'm in that stage where I'm like and I'm, no you can't send it back. This is not Amazon, but you can put it up for sale if I if I'm really unsure about it and I think I would um I I think I would keep it like when if I did put it up for sale I could sell it for probably exactly for what I paid cuz it's it's that rare that that I, and I know there's a lot of weirdos out there who buy used on the used market they love to shop there because that's where all the fun finds are when you go on Kijiji so I think I could sell it if I want, if I was, if I wanted to back out. <laughs> um, but I, I think what, it, what drew me to it is, is that, uh, I love the sliding sound and, and, and I love, uh, I love the idea of being able to experiment with music. So instrument, any instrument that gives you that capability is a good instrument to me. I actually, uh, there was also another one that came through the music store in the holiday season and it just wasn't the right time, but there was a Turkish uh, instrument that was four strings, I believe. And that one sounded really good. It was really resonant. Um, I have to, I have to get the name of that instrument again, but that was good. And I, I, so I kind of regretted, but that one had a really weird tuning. I know with this, I can, I can work with it in my, in my repertoire because I can tune it into tunings that I know. <laughs> That's the advantage of of sticking with instruments that are in your that that are building on your strengths. And but what I was trying to get at was is that the it does kind of appeal to me to be able to play and play something that not a lot of people have and that you can kind of carve out your own sound. The challenge then though becomes, do you spend your time working on the fretless instrument and how to play that? Um, Cause there's a lot of technique that would go into just hitting how to play a scale up and down and hit all the notes. And I actually had heard a quote from Getty Lee on um, the rush, the basis from rush. I'd heard that someone asked him what he thought about fretless basses and he he tried it for a while. He might have even tried it in Rush. And he's like, he, at the end of the day, he said, like, I prefer to be able to play, play, hit the notes, which he, that's the, that's the challenge of fretless instruments. Some people just can't, they can't get the, um, they can't stick with it enough or whatever, or they just don't have it in their capability to, that's not in their strengths to be hitting, hitting the right notes. And, so that's going to be the challenge for me about this instrument because I could, if I did sell it, I would, I know a different type of guitar. Like there's always a next guitar that's on your list. And so I know that if I got, if I, I don't want to say get rid of it. It's, it really was, it's a beautiful instrument. Um, let's see if I can put it up. To, it's, it's a beautiful, I mean, it's called the Basico. It's the, it's actually it's really the most basic instrument, but I still think it came out very beautiful, and it um, it's it's very un because it's called the basikiko, 
basicico meaning basic model it's like not lacquered up it has no cutaway on the to get to the frets it really is a basic block of wood <laughs> type instrument but it's it does its job and it that was their way of being able to to deliver a fretless guitar at a, of, at the lowest price plus it has a pickup in it which i saw in that demo i was running it through a delay some delay and reverb and yeah i don't know what else i was going to say about it um yeah it's the basicico so it's a nice nice instrument uh so sold to me by g and g guitars who but it's made by altamira and yeah um i thought there was some other stuff i wanted to talk about before i i head off here into the sunset and it literally is is going to be a sunset soon um i think one of the 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 stories that i would i would leave you with is i um i think it's it there's it's it's nice to be able to treat your work as a a study and what i mean by a study is that um in the art gallery they have if you see like a famous painting oftentimes the painter had done a study version before the painting was finished and that's usually on a small they would make it on a small square that would be a sketch and then they do the big painting and i and this comes from my ideas about growth mindset and that if you see everything as a sketch or as a study it's a lot easier to jump into it and i've talked about it before in the podcast in other forms but i talk about it again now and that is that like uh let's say like this thing i did with the demo of the the guitar that's kind of a study for maybe a bigger maybe a piece that it gets written for this guitar and that i play you know i do a little uh, a little repertoire whatever with this guitar and then and then even when that perform that thing happens and let's say perform that live for people that's a study like it it never ends it's a continual it's a continual work in progress and it's um yeah i because I, I think about it even like if someone did stand-up comedy like they would you would be tempted to think that every little gig they go to those open mics is like leading up to this big comedy special and that would be the it that'd be the end of it but it's it's not that way because they're going to eventually do another comedy special and another one and then maybe they get a, a, a contract to write a movie and a tv show which happened with jerry seinfeld um or he's you know stars in the show and and then he and then he's who knows what his next act is and same with adam sandler it was um he, he, he you know he would probably start out with like stand up and then skits and then he's in comedy movies and now he's in now he's always like serious movies <laughs> he's or he's playing like serious roles and who knows maybe it become he maybe he becomes like this oscar winning and maybe he's won oscars i don't know um already but <laughs> he becomes this really serious actor and and the career just evolves and the, each item is a is kind of like a russian doll for the next uh thing that you do and i just say that because and it went off like quite deep with adam sandler <laughs> but the the point is is that uh, like i definitely as i continue to keep doing the music in my podcast i definitely get um cramped up sometimes about like 
uh, working on a piece of music and or and and you put so much pressure on yourself to say when I sit down to do this piece of music that it's going to get uh, it's it's not just going to be finished when I sit finished when I'm done sitting down with it it's going to be good and when you when you start to get into that behavior and that mentality it's it it becomes you're you're barking up the wrong tree and and the creativity doesn't want to really talk to you because you're like you're demanding that you say I want it my way I want it so that when I sit down this thing's going to work out and there'll be no um no drama just works and I'm 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 all I be I walk away a rich man from writing my my hit song and and what I'm getting at there is that there's this idea of the rela- there's a relationship with with your art and your creative spirit and that relationship can be it can be rocky like any other relationship where there's one-sided thinking and one-sided behavior and i think it's important to understand that that a, a good relationship with your art has to be cultivated over time and it's kind of it does sound corny um, and it does sound like a, a relationship therapist would say, uh, but it, it does come down to a lot of trust that you would be able to trust that when you, that before you sit down, that you trust that that something is going to happen that when you, when you do it, when you, when you get that little bit of discipline down Uh, my discipline is called sit in the chair (laughs) because I have to fold out if I want to play guitar I have to fold out a chair and and if I've done that that then I'm I'm on the next stage of like pick up the guitar and then the next stage is like sit there for a few minutes um I mean warm up obviously but really just sit sit there because it does take five to ten minutes to like for anything anything to start happening interesting. It could happen within two minutes that you're like jamming away, but but realistically, you've switched your context from you know being in the kitchen or or whatever you were doing before, and now you're you're at your instrument, so you have to give it time. Or you could be at your easel painting, so you definitely have to give it time for things to get to get going and and so there's that element of trust that you are that that if you if you if you sit down the 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 heavens will be unlocked for you (laughs) and that what i that really is referring to is that you will enter into the flow state and you will start enjoying your work because you're so enveloped in it. And sometimes I sit down to play guitar and I, and, and I it, like, um, two hours could go by. It's not often that happens, but it, it does happen where you can go into a trance because you, you have a loop going or you're working on something good. And then, and then before you know it, it's like, Whoa, I should have been eating dinner an hour ago. When you look at the clock, so the point of, of all this is that, um, yeah, that you, you have an element of trust and we're, we're taught to not trust anything. We're, we're taught to, we kind of condition ourselves to be doubtful and to be scared in that, um, and that's a reference to the news because the news the the news conditions us and it tells us what what we do need to know i mean do i would never tell you to stop watching the news got i got to get my my news input every every day for sure but the the point is is to acknowledge that what you're learning from the news does not really uh carry over very well to um 
working on on music and creative work and that's why a lot of times i believe you you can only really uh, sit down to do work when you find some way of clearing your mind from all the conditioning and that's why it can be very hard to to do creative work at the end of the day because your your mind is holding all this stuff from the people that you that you've seen and talked to and even even the the everyday things of of like running into um like if you if you ever do a commute and now you've seen a hundred and you've seen 200 people um you know, add up the amount of people you see in both directions that you've gone. And then when you get home, you're somehow supposed to uh, be, be do some creative work. It's, it's, it's possible, but it's very difficult when it's, when the mind is jammed up. So yeah, back to the original, what started that whole sermon is, is that the that treating things like they're a study and a, a small painting is a good way to help enter into that state and to get into the that that going it's like okay i'm just going to poke around a little bit i'm just curious what is in this box i'd like to poke my head around that corner that's curiosity and it's curiosity. I, I've heard it spoken about by leadership uh, type coaches, and sometimes I'm very skeptical when they they say yes, curiosity and open heart. But if if you if you can find a way to to see that for yourself, and to to I can't say that word curiosity. And then you you would just say, ah, yes, I'll be curious when I sit down to play. No, I think that that curiosity is like a lifelong journey to, to get there. To be curious and have the open heart because it's a lifelong journey because many of us are storing the opposites um, as our defaults, default mode network, doubt, um de- what what are the other negatives um doubt uh, fear and um yeah and that, those those are just two that you need to say that you need to know about and I'll leave you with one final uh, thought about the whole thing is is that you can have a visualization of your of your creative work being in a a house and there's all these different rooms in the house. And inside that, these different rooms are represent your things that you're interested in. And so for me, it could be experimental. It could be a room. Because like, I don't just do experimental music, but I, I sometimes pair it with video and animation. Um, or guitar is a room in my, in my creative house. Composition is a room. But... On the front lawn of that house are the the different negative of, um, items that pop up, and so and they come to your lawn, and that is fear, doubt. <laughs> I forget all of them. You know what they are. You could fill in the blanks for me, but there is um, scarcity. You know that there's that there's not enough to go around. Like there, like if a scarcity of of music would be like, everyone's got enough music to listen to. They don't need to hear my music. They have thousands of songs every day they can listen to. Uh, there's only so much room for people's for people to be discovered in music, and um, scarcity is just one. And they, they all these little creatures show up on your lawn and it's your it's your job as the creator to say i'm not i'm not letting you in my house today (laughs) you you've you've been in my house before you made a mess you're not coming in today i'm 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 going into the experimental room 
I'm going into the fretless guitar room and you you guys and girls are not welcome to come in with me. You can stay on my lawn, but you're not coming in the house. So you can play with that however you want. And then to tie it all back together, it's the curiosity that that takes you through the different doors in the house and the and it takes you from one room to the next and it, and the curiosity to renovate your home and that you know upgrading your skills in 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 your areas i take guitar lessons every week As, and they were started before the pandemic and then during the pandemic they they were a little spor- they weren't sporadic they were like every other week before the pandemic and then they were um at some point it was like i have to do this every week and i've had them every week for we're going on two years now or whatever i don't know but that's an example to a, a renovation of your home um even i i try not to spend too much time on youtube on random tutorials but if there's ones that are specific to like like um a certain thing you want to learn then i i really back that i i don't back as much i've i've gone through it with the random youtube videos and you just feel really icky after like some i've seen stuff like that just like they're they're like uh motivational people that are just they're just a bit much and they come up through in your feed if you if you or whatever you're into it comes into your feed and and then but those are renovations to your house and yeah curiosity is in to expand your house if you want to or make it smaller and more intimate and and that's something that i kind of have to that i do um is is acknowledging like at my age and in playing music that i have a better shot with with sort of cultivating my own little little niche and rather than expecting that i would uh, experience what a, what most people experience when they're younger which is uh, this uh, you know the rock star kind of thing where they they tour a lot and they're burn themselves out my my direction is a little more um creating new things that don't really exist and experimenting so that's um that's it for today uh yeah so uh, this is elliot's podcast i'm on patreon patreon.com patreon.com slash feinberg and i'm actually and and the patreon is just uh, music so like last week's podcast was a, a mix of music that had been made on this podcast and then but for the patreon i i, I made a special flack version which is higher quality audio and then i'm going to be opening up so that's three dollars a month for that patreon but i'm going to open up a second patreon uh, a second tier in there that'll also be three dollars a month but that's just for content that i want to work on about the stuff around this creative habits things that and the mindsets and all that so um but i was talking to my friend claudia this week about text messages as um like a week maybe a weekly text message would be what you get on that patreon um or it might it, maybe i use a different service i don't know but you get the point this is that um i'm interested in in other channels with that but uh crowd crowdfunding or the uh, i don't know what you call patreon i forget the name it's like direct to fan support. It does really interest me. Um, I think there's something. I know it's taking a while for me to really understand, to wrap my head around it. But that's why I'm kind of just sticking with it because there's cool stuff there. And then, uh, of course, yeah, I, I work on my music releases. So there's that other focus too. And and I'll I'll be doing one this month. Uh, th- this month, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got some original music really cooking up here. Earlier today, I was even working on like a metal, a metal type track. Um, but uh, I've got some good stuff coming up, and so I, I'm going to put together another 
uh, release the end of the month. I don't know if it'll be one track or if it'll be two to three tracks. I kind of like putting out a few tracks at once. I think it's a good way to go. Um, so that's that's it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I record in Toronto, Toronto, Canada. It's a great city and it's about to get really disgusting because summer summers in Toronto are uh, they're kind of, um, it's, it's humid and, and gross. <laughs> so right now it's June. It's been really nice. It's the end of, uh, this is, this is the tail end of spring, beautiful weather. You get some nice breezy, cool days and it's just about to get, uh, raunchy. <laughs> so thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. Okay. Take care.